This video is for section 9.3, test for population mean, and since we've already done confidence intervals for population means, and we just saw hypothesis tests for proportions, uh, we're just going to dive right into an example and see how this one is different and add the new stuff to it as we go along. So in our notes we have a problem here about a degree of reading power, uh, a test that children take. Uh, we're given uh, sample data from 44 third grade students and we're asked to uh, compare this to the national mean of 34. So just some observations here. First of all, I see that I have 44 third grade students. So we have a large sample. That's kind of nice. So the CLT is going to apply somewhere down the road. We're given an alpha value of 10%. Uh, that's when we'll reject the null hypothesis. Uh, I also see that I want to do something that's different from the national mean of 34. That's going to help me shape my null and alternate hypothesis. And one last observation here. Notice what we're not given. Uh, we don't know the popula population standard deviation. And that means that here we're going to use a t-test just like we used a t-interval in the last chapter. So here are the rules for using a t-test. This is right from your te textbook here, but I want to point out the, the key features here. First of all, notice that we need an SRS from a large population. Nothing new there. What is new here is the test statistic. Instead of a Z, like with proportions, this time we're computing a T statistic. But notice that the format is somewhat similar to what we did with proportions. We're going to take a sample mean. We're going to subtract it from some hypothesized mean. And we'll divide this by what was called in the last chapter the standard error. So it doesn't look much different. It still has that Z score format. But since we don't know the population standard deviation, we have to use the T distribution. Towards the bottom of this slide, you also see the conditions we need to follow here. We follow this test when the population distribution is normal or when the sample size is large and the CLT applies. So in this one, the CLT will apply and we can safely use the T procedures. And also, we want a large population. The population has to be at least 10 times as large as the sample. That's all the new stuff. So we're going to dive right into the problem here. So I'm going to use the state plan do conclude method here. Um, so let's go through all four steps. So first of all, in my statement, I just want to be able to clarify what the problem is about and identify that population of interest. So here we want to determine if this district's third graders differ from the national mean. Okay? Um, I have a null and alternate hypothesis in that the mean is 34 versus perhaps my suspicion that our mean is different from 34. And I need to clearly identify what I'm talking about when I use mu here. I want to be able to identify that population of interest. So here, mu is the mean district third grade score. That is the population of interest. Just third graders in this particular district. And I'm comparing them to the national mean. So I'm all set for the plan part now. The plan is not going to look much different than what we did with confidence intervals. We need randomness. We need normality. We need independence. So let's go through all three of these things here, but now we're becoming veterans at it here. First of all, randomness. We're told we have an SRS of the district's third grade students. Independence. Now here I'm going to have to do a little assuming here. I'm going to have to assume that there are at least 440 third graders. That's 10 times 44 in this district's schools. So I'm going to have to make a little assumption there. Uh, and since I have a large population, I can assume that these cho uh, students were chosen without replacement and thus are independent observations. The normality condition, here the normality condition, since n is greater than 30, the CLT applies, and that means that the sampling distribution of x bar is approximately normal, and I'm safe to use the T procedures here. Notice in this one, n is greater than 30, you need to think about what's going to happen if n is less than 30. We're then going to have to appeal to making a box plot and trying to assume something about the normality of the population in order to make this argument. But here we're safe, n is 44. Now the do part of this problem, I'm going to do in two different ways. I'm going to show you how to do it if you have a table of t values in front of you, and also how you do it just on your calculator. So let's dive into both methods here. So first of all, what if we want to use a table? So I'm going to start off by using my handy dandy calculator to calculate the summary statistics here. Um, I know there's 44 observations. I can compute x bar, which is 35.09. That seems to be above the 34 of the national average, so that might be some evidence um, that I am different from the national average. And I also need to sample standard deviation here, which is 11.19. Using all this information, I can figure out the test statistic, which is t equals, and I'm just plugging everything into the formula here, taking x bar, subtracting it from the hypothesized mean, and dividing by the standard error. You can calculate that all on your own, and you can see that we should get 0.646 here. 
Now, what's different here is getting the p-value is a little bit tricky because, again, I'm assuming that I'm not going to use a t-test on my calculator here. I'm going to go right to a t-table and show you how to do this. So let's pull up a t-table here. So we have to remind ourselves what the format of this is here. With a t-distribution, I need a certain number of degrees of freedom. So we have the degrees of freedom column. But one thing I notice here is I don't have 43 degrees of freedom. 44 minus 1 anywhere here. So what should I use? Well, the idea here is that as you get into higher numbers of degrees of freedom, first of all, notice that these numbers really don't change all that much as you get into higher numbers of degrees of freedom. But if I'm forced to use one, you end up using the one that's larger. I want a more conservative estimate. I want to go out more standard deviations. So I'm going to use 50 here for the number of degrees of freedom. Now, once I've established 50 for the numbers of degrees, degrees of freedom, take a look at this line of numbers. You have to ask yourself, where does 0.646 lie on this line here? And that will give me my tail area. Well, 0.646 doesn't really lie anywhere. In fact, the closest I get is 0.679. And if it were 0.679, my tail's area would be 0.25. And it's actually going to be larger than that because I'm in even farther than that. So this, this affords me at least an estimate of what the p-value would be. Drawing a nice sketch will help out here. There's my 34. There's my 35.09. And I've established from the table that that has an area of at least 0.25. But keep in mind as well that this is a two-tailed test. So my p-value is two times the probability uh, of that tail. That's two times at least 0.25. I have a p-value that's at least 0.50. So I'll fail to reject the null hypothesis. So my point here is that if you use the table to find p-values, you'll rarely be able to get an exact p-value. All you'll be able to do is estimate. Now, if using the, the table of, of values uh, seems a little confusing to you, that's okay because we'll always be able to use our calculator here. And this is how we're going to do it most of the time. So here's the good part about having a nice graphing calculator in front of us. Uh, first of all, again, I am going to write down the summary statistics. X-bar is 35.09. T is 0.647. I got that right by using doing a t-test in the calculator. Um, you might want to go through your calculator and, and test doing that by entering all the values and checking and, uh, uh, and, and verifying my solution there. The p-value out of the calculator is 0.5251. And do notice here that 0.5251 is exactly what I had on the last slide, or at least close to it, uh, where I said that the p-value was going to be greater than 0.5. Also have to make note of the degrees of freedom here. Your calculator will let you know that the number of degrees of freedom here is 43. I always want to make a nice sketch here. I like to put in the actual values from the test here. 34 is my null hypothesis. I get an X bar of 35.09. Make sure you shade in both sides. So no matter how you slice it, at the 10% level, I will fail to reject the null hypothesis because the p-value is clearly greater than 0.10. So we've done state, plan, do, we're all set for the conclusion now. Now the conclusion, keep in mind, should have two parts. The first part should just contain statistical language, tell the reader what you did and how you did it, and then I need to see something about the test scores of the third graders in this district. So my conclusion, this one's going to be a little bit wordy, so it's going to take a little time to write on the screen, but if this district's third graders are the same as the national average, which was 34, then the probability that you get the sample you did, that you get an SRS of 44 students, who score as far away as 35.09. The probability of that is 0.5251. So a couple things in here. I've compared the sample we got to the hypothesized value, and what is the probability of that happening? All in one sentence. It's a lot to write, but you'll really gain some understanding by writing the whole clear argument here. And because we have a 0.5251, that 0.5251 is larger than any reasonable uh, significance level. We used 10%. We stated it earlier in the problem. So we failed to reject the null hypothesis. So that is my conclusion, just the statistical part of it. Now I'm going to do the conclusion in terms of third graders. So what this means about third graders is we can conclude, or we can, cannot, excuse me, cannot conclude that this district's third graders are different than the national average. So that part of it is nice and short. So all the time investment in the first part of my conclusion makes this part nice and short. We cannot conclude that we're different. Okay? So t-tests is your first experience with it. We'll be doing a lot of them on the calculator, looking at different scenarios. So at this point, I just wish you luck with all of your t-tests.